in Asheville, what the city of Asheville did after they became a member of Cool Cities was, as I already mentioned, there was a, ch a regime change. We had regime change in Asheville. We got a new mayor and new city council and all that. And that turned out to be a good thing. We had a city council member. This is, you know, find your advocates. Find your advocates. And, and, and hopefully they'll be advocate enough that they'll come find you. We had a city council member who said, I want, a, I want a sustainability committee. We've already heard from Durham and from other places that that's critical, right? Well, I want a sustainability committee. And, they, and the city council put together this committee and they put us down and they said, we need, we need a, 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 we want a goal. Give us a goal. And we came to them about four months later with two goals. And we said, we think that the city should reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 80%. Well, what we did was we went to the science. This gentleman was asking Tobin about the science. We went to the science and we said, well, what do the scientists say? And the best scientists say that by the middle of this century, we must reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 80%. So we said, that's what we're going to do. And guess what? We've we got 40 years to do it. So that just means if we can reduce by 2% a year, we can get back there. And, and somebody came up with a great analogy. I love this analogy. You know, you can drive from here to California every single, you know, drive it at night, you know, so you can spend the days doing something else. You can drive from here in California and never be able to see any further than the ed edge of your headlights, which is maybe, what, 200 feet, 300 feet? That's as far as you can see. You can, get, you can get all the way across the continent. We do not have to know how to get all the way to the goal. We only have to know which way to go. And the energy efficiency issues, as I've been making the argument, are the starting points. We already know these technologies. We already know how to do these things. And we know that the, the anxiety about it being too expensive um, can be worked with. You know, um, there are a lot of different ways that, uh, that these things can be fi funded and financed. Um, the other goal that the city of Asheville put into place was, was one of these lead goals. They said, that, as I mentioned, buildings 500,000 feet and greater would be lead goal. Uh, goal. So this 2% goal that the city has adopted is going to make it uh, very amenable to this idea that existing buildings need to be upgraded in terms of upgrade of energy. Because the low-hanging fruit you know, can, be, can be picked. The low hanging fruit has been picked. There were some obvious changes in fleet. One of the things that the city of Asheville did was for everybody that they possibly could, they went to a four day work week. Saved a lot of energy because there are days when the buildings now don't have to be fully turned on. Um, so they've, they've done some things, but they are looking at fixing the buildings. Um, and some of that is fixing the envelope of the building. It's also a matter of um, of getting the right machinery. We were talking about, David mentioned HVAC. Cities and municipalities um, also have uh, pumping systems and other things that can be, um, can be uh, amenable to um, you know, using systems that are more efficient than, than other systems in uh, water pumping and wastewater pumping and those kinds of things. But in terms of buildings, um, I think that one of the things that um, it's very important if, you go, if you're going to try to make these arguments, you can make the avoided cost argument, the argument that you know, over time you're gonna, the city will save money uh, based on, uh, on its uh, energy use. And, and the arguments for this, you, you'll see, are very strong. Um, we are looking in Asheville it's what call, at a, a, what's called um, performance contracting. I mean, there are companies out there that want to get into municipalities and create these kinds of savings uh, at a fixed cost because they know that uh, if if they take responsibility, uh, that, that they can they can make it happen and charge you money to make it happen so that you're st still um, the economics still work out. But there, it's a profit-making thing for the companies that are doing it. Question or comment? Well, just Follow up on that. Greensboro just signed the performance contract um, for most of the large municipal buildings that there's no out of pocket expense for Greensboro. It's right. all guaranteed savings through energy savings until the contract's paid off. 
other, so these are, the, these are things, now Asheville's looking at it, and I have sort of stepped away from the process a little bit, but that's one way to do it. If you have the resources in-house to do it yourself, then you can actually, while you have to come up with the out-of-pocket money at the beginning, it can be of economic benefit to the, to the community to do it themselves. So, so that's the, you know, the, the, the anxiety, the myth that these things cost money. Um, sure, there's an upfront cost, but the savings um, often, always, uh, in, in my experience, outweigh the costs. And that's why there's companies out there doing performance contracting, because they, they can see that they can make, make money. Um, 